Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pivot Boss pre market video for Tuesday, August 27th, 2019. I am Frank Ochoa, aka Pivot Boss. Here's a look at the daily time frame of the ES. You'll notice here that we had a, a pretty serious bounce back in the previous session here. After Friday's sell off, we had overnight strength that came into the market Sunday night and pre market Monday, which continued throughout the rest of the day as uh, the market was able to digest those gains and hold them into the close. That's very similar to what we saw a few weeks back over here when we had a major sell-off and bounced back on a Tuesday. This was a major sell-off on a Wednesday, bounced back on Thursday and Friday. And we've had three-day bounce backs to give back that entire sell-off. Three-day bounce back over here to give that uh, the, the losses of that move. And now we have another perhaps three days where we could bounce back up toward the 29.20 to 29.40 zone. Again, remember, we have the Labor Day holiday coming up in the U.S. on Monday, so we have an extended holiday weekend this weekend. So while we could bounce higher over the next two to three days here, uh, we may go sideways Thursday and Friday at these highs, trading between, say, 29.20 and 29.40, very similar to what we saw this previous times uh, after sell-off. So right now, any pullbacks could be a buying opportunity here today. Any morning weakness could be a buying opportunity for late day strength as this thing continues to push higher back toward recent highs. Here's a look at the NQ. Very similar price action here for the NQ. Major sell-off followed by overnight strength and a continuation into the close. We saw this back here as well where price reached the midpoint of the day of the previous sell-off. We had that midpoint reached again here. We have a very narrow range at the moment, just 35% of average. ES is at 33% of average uh, as of right now. But again, that could still lead to overall strength over the next day or two into the recent highs. Again, 7,700 to 7,800 could be the final uh, target zone here heading into Wednesday's close. After that, Thursday, Friday may be a range-bound uh, finish into the end of the week. Uh, very similar to what we saw back here where we finished uh, within the range. We bounced and finished in the range. This could be the very same thing here as we head into an extended weekend. Uh, again, until price can really find acceptance back above 7800 or 7850, we still have uh, mostly a downward bias right now, although support down here has been very significant. We reached 7400 as we mentioned we could. And this is the third bounce from 7,400 we're seeing. That's very similar to that 2,800 that the ES continues to uh, find support at. So again, this is a very significant trading range here. We're going to stay inside the range until proven otherwise. But look for the next move to continue to be up. Looking at crude oil, you'll notice here with crude oil that uh, we've had quite a bit of selling pressure. 57s have been significant resistance. We have an overhead trend line as well midpoint retest with a continuation the previous session here rejected prices above 55s and dropped and right now we're kind of right at the midpoint of the previous sessions range again this looks fairly bearish overall but I would say right now we are heading into the part of the year where crude oil tends to drop in terms of seasonality so starting late September and into October we tend to see weakness at this time of the year like this. So if we're building out a descending wedge here and we've been consolidating this entire time, it may release some energy to the downside here heading into the end of September, October, November, December. So right now we're in the build out phase, but at some point here we're going to break free from this narrow compression and we are about to see some trending behavior and it could be to the downside. If you look at a five year or 10 year seasonality chart, it all points lower for crude oil in Q4. So keep that in mind. Now in the near term, again, uh, we're, we're turning down off the 57s. We're failing to hold 55s. That could lead to a little bit of near term weakness ahead. Keep an eye on 55. Any failure to get back above that zone suggests more weakness ahead. Lastly, taking a look at gold futures, this one reached our target at 1565 on the swing bounce. We talked about this Pima trigger zone right here leading to another bounce potentially into 1565 and as high as 1585. We got it right on the nose after uh, two good days here. We're now kind of holding on a narrow inside day, just 40% of average right now. 
but we still continue to hold inside that very clear uptrending uh, phase of this market here. Additionally, we have a great LVN down below here, about 1490. So any pullback still remains a buying opportunity in gold until proven otherwise. Uh, and at the moment here, until price fails to hold 1460, this market is still pointing higher with the potential to see 1600 down the road. All right, that is it for now. We'll see how this develops the rest of the session. Good luck, trade well, and I'll see you in the trade room. Take care.